To all who shall see these presents, greetings. Ruck Dog here, back with another Dystopian Wars 3.0 video. This time I am going to be taking a closer look at the Union Orbat. Now, you might be wondering why I'm starting with the Union, and that's simply because if you go to the Dystopian Wars website, dystopianwars.com, and look at the factions page, the Union is simply the first one that's listed from left to right along the top of the screen. And so we'll go left to right, makes sense, start with the Union. Now, uh, I apologize, this video is a little bit later than I wanted. It's a, been a bit of a longer hiatus than I had initially intended. And I, there's some perfectly valid reasons for that that have absolutely nothing to do with my poor time management skills. No, not, not at all. Perfectly valid reasons for this video being uh, a little bit uh, later than I had intended. Anyway, we're going to go through a list of topics here. I want to take a look at the special rules for the faction. We're going to look at the weapons overview. And I'm going to emphasize a couple of weapons the Union have that are unique to the faction. Then we're going to go through the stats for the models. And we're going to do a little bit of an overview, but then we're going to dig into details and look at each stat line in turn. Then finally, we're going to take a look at the fleet building options included at the front over the Orbat. And then we're going to talk about some fleet builds that I think might be kind of fun on the tabletop. Then we'll wrap up with a rating and some final thoughts. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and move on to the special rules. But I do want to emphasize before we get to that, you know, this is, first of all, using version 102 alpha of the Orbat, and this will change over time as new models are released and then new stats are released to support those new models. Um, but 1.02 Alpha is the most recent version of the Orbat as of the 13th of December when I'm recording this. And then for the Union, I want to also emphasize I have not actually played with or against these stats. So any kind of discussion I have regarding whether or not a certain unit is worth taking or the relative merits of various aspects of the Orbat uh, should be taken with that in mind, i.e. with a rather large grain of salt. Okay, so let's talk about the faction special rules. There's three rules to talk about here. The first is the Akron Observer special rule. This is a interesting special thing for the Americans where you have the model that looks a little bit like a B-17 fuselage with a set of quad rotors attached to it. And this airship doesn't really count as a fully fledged model on its own because if you look here, it is using the escort rules from the rule book, okay? And it is, it's got a modest offensive capability with a rocket pod, which we'll see in the weapon summary coming up here. But the big thing that it does is it boosts your defense. So this is both your aerial and submerged defensive values. So that's good. And it also gives extreme range quality here to any aerial weapons. All right. Now, Aerial weapons is the big thing to emphasize here, okay, because that it translates essentially to rockets for the purposes of the Americans, right? And the extreme range quality, for those who don't remember, gives you 10 inches extra range. So that allows your extreme range, instead of being 20 inches to 30 inches, to go from 20 inches all the way out to 40 inches. So that's, that's not nothing. That's a pretty significant boost. All right, contra rotation. Uh, this is going to be familiar to old timey FSA players back from the Spartan days. This allows you to essentially spin in place, and it's a nod to the fact that most of the American models have these large paddle wheels on either side of the ship. And this is, in terms of the background material, this is the ship putting one side of the paddle wheel into a forward direction and the other side into a reverse direction, allowing it to sort of twist in place. Uh, it says you can do a single turn of up to 90 degrees on the spot, and that you can then move and turn normally. So this is something that can honestly be used pretty much for free. Um, it allows you to 
It, well, so you, you lose your drift value, which is sort of a problem for a larger model that may be relying upon its drift for a good chunk of its total distance and movement. Um, but it allows you to uh, turn in place up to 90 degrees, which would be a key thing to do if you're trying to line up broadsides or an aft turret or something like that. So it could be very handy. And then we have Give Him Hell. Now, this is a special ability that can allow your gunnery or fusillade weapons, which include your broadsides, to get the devastating quality for the duration of the activation, with the downside that you gain a disorder condition. All right, so devastating. Is that worth a disorder condition? What does devastating do? Well, devastating is where you get three hits instead of two for an exploding dice, okay? So the dice, you know, explodes like normal, gives you an extra dice, but instead of counting as two hits on its own, it now counts as three, in addition to that additional die you get to roll. Basically, it gives you some bonus hits for your exploding dice. It could be a very powerful rule. It depends on how many exploding hits you roll. But um, it is an interesting way to get some extra hits. Now, this is sort of condition is obviously going to be situational, depending on how much disorder a model might already have. There are some tricks that can be used by the union to kind of get around this give them hell disorder condition. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later when we get into the model profiles. All right, so that pretty much is the special rules. Now let's talk about weapons. So there are a few things here that I wanna highlight. First of all, the cruise missile silo. This is a Union Special weapon that's only on, I believe, one model. And you can see that if you compare the stats here to the standard heavy rocket battery, you'll see that it compares pretty favorably at the long range. You get some extra dice at long range. The other big thing that it gives you is this blast, all right, which, allow, remember, allows you to use the circular template. So if you have three models under the circular template, you roll 12 dice and you apply the number of hits you got to each of the models in the blast zone. So that is a potentially deadly thing if you're talking about mass one models. You can easily kill three or four mass one models using this weapon with those kinds of dice. High velocity, it means that your aerial defense is less effective. Your heavy counters only count as a regular counter when you're rolling your aerial defense against these incoming cruise missiles. And then as a downside, there are limited, okay? Now, limited doesn't mean that you're tracking ammunition. It doesn't mean that it's a one-shot weapon. What it means is that every time you shoot it, you roll one of your action dice, and if it comes up blank, then the weapon is not usable for the rest of the game. Remember, there's only one blank side to the die, so if you're thinking in terms of a standard D6, that's essentially saying, okay, I fire my cruise missiles, I roll a die, I got a one, that means that my weapon is now no longer available for the rest of the game, all right? So it's, you know, a non-zero chance of it running out of ammunition, but it's, it's not super likely. So not a huge downside, but still a downside, I would say. All right, so the other sort of Union Special Sauce weapons are your heavy electrocannon batteries right here. Uh, these give you a arc attack. Otherwise, they're fairly similar to the heavy gun batteries, a little weaker at range, perhaps. And then you have the naval electrocannon, which is the heavy electrocannon's uh, younger brother, essentially. <laughs> And this is going to give you dice that are in the ballpark of a gun battery. You know, compared to the electro cannon, the gun battery has less dice at point blank, um, but more dice at closing. So, again, it, it, it's sort of in the same class, just a little bit of a uh, different laydown for the, the dice. Now, what does ARC give you? Is ARC worth those trade offs? Well, Arc ignores shield generators, which is good. And also, if you score a critical hit on the target with these weapons, they give you an additional disorder condition. Okay, So not a amazing gotta have it set of capabilities, but they do have a little bit of extra uh, goodness to them that the regular gun batteries wouldn't get. 
And because they still count as gunnery, they can still benefit from the give them hell special rule. All right, so that is pretty much it. Just the cruise missile silo, heavy electro cannon battery, and naval electro cannon. Those are your three special weapons for the Union. Now let's talk about the, the, the models here a little bit and a little bit how we break down in the Orbat. So this is how we are set up right now for stat lines. We've got one big mass four ship over here, the Enterprise. And then we have really a single mass three model that has two named variants. So you have sort of the vanilla constitution, and then you've got two named ships, the Mexico and the Texas. And we'll talk about those in a little more detail here pretty quick. Then in the mass two section, we've got no less than eight different profiles, okay? And that's basically thanks to the fact that we're using a modular plastic kit for your mass two models, which means you can build all kinds of different variants off the sprue, which is pretty handy. Uh, so this is where sort of your, your big dose of flexibility and uh, adaptability, you could say, comes from in the federated, or I'm sorry, in the union list. <laughs> Slipping back into old habits there. Now over here in the Mass 1, you've got a couple different types of destroyers. You've got a sort of the standard, stock standard frigate right here. And then you also have something called the Patriot uh, Automata. Now this is the essentially the replacement for the John Henry robot. So think big, stompy robot with guns and rockets and all kinds of good stuff. And you're, you're basically there. Uh, it's It's... Essentially, for the time being, because I don't think they've actually released the model yet, uh, this stat line uh, can be used to represent, the, or the John Henry can be used to represent the stat line on the table, if you have any of the old Spartan John Henry models. There is concept art for what I assume is the new version of this model, uh, the Patriot, and it is quite a bit different from the old John Henry, but um, still pretty cool. So... Anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the stat lines themselves. We are going to go at this in terms of descending order of mass. So we're going to start with the mass 4 model and work our way down. So the Enterprise Heavy Carrier, 325 points. That is a decent chunk. And as you'll see here momentarily, that is uh, considerably more expensive than the battleships. Um, in return for the extra cost, you get a couple of interesting things. First of all, you get some substantial rocket armament, right? So we're talking about heavy rocket batteries here. Um, and then one thing I noticed is that this bottom heavy rocket battery has an aft slash port. I'm, I'm wondering if that should be an aft port and starboard <laughs> option. But uh, regardless, that's still some decent amount of dice there. So remember... A heavy rocket battery at long range kicks out 10 dice and links with uh, or supports with five. So just off these two forward-facing rocket batteries, you could be looking at 15 dice. And that's before you buff them with the Akron observation rotor. Um, might very well be a worthwhile investment uh, to help with both the survivability of this large centerpiece model and to, to boost its offense a little bit. At 10 SRS, uh, you are looking at a substantial carrier here. Now, this is definitely in the realm of the heavy carrier. So if you're going to do a carrier-centric fleet, this is going to be the, the ship you're going to take. So this model is kind of the replacement for the old Saratoga double-decker carrier from the Spartan days in a lot of ways. In fact, if you look at the proxy table at the end of the Orbat, that is the model that you would use to um, uh, represent this uh, carrier on the table, right? And it is, well, it's interesting in the sense that one of the problems that the Saratoga had in the Spartan days was that it was a really great carrier. However, comma, carriers weren't necessarily the greatest thing in the game compared to your gunships. And at least so far, from what I've read and heard from folks that have had a chance to really feel the carrier-heavy fleet, the SRS and the Soviet Wars 3.0 are still more of a supporting weapon than really a suitable centerpiece for your entire fleet. So 
we'll see. Now, uh, this, this ship might very well fall into that same kind of no man's land. Uh, other goodies you got here, internal shield generator. So you've got a shield generator to help you out to give them a survivability. Launch catapults gives you a little bit of a boost on your launch radius for SRS tokens. It's not a huge boost, three inches versus, um, you know, to 23 inches versus the usual 20. But it might be worth having. Might be worth having. All right. So uh, moving on to the battleships. So as I mentioned, there is a vanilla stat line followed by two special named ships. Okay. So this is your vanilla stat line battleship. Okay. So you'll see here that we've got the um, special rules for the FSA right here. And as a matter of fact, this unit can take advantage of all three because you can not only take, you not only have contra rotation give them hell, you can also buy an observation rotor uh, for 23 points. Now, the one downside of taking the observation rotor with a stock configuration is that in its stock configuration, the constitution does not have any weapons with the aerial trait. Uh, so that's a little bit of a problem. However, you can replace any heavy gun battery with a heavy rocket battery for three points. Now notice that it says any heavy gun battery. Um, that means that in theory, you could take a rocket battleship, okay? Which means that for nine points, essentially, one for each turret, you could take each of these heavy gun batteries and replace them with a heavy rocket battery. Now, would that make sense? It might, it might. So it would make sense in terms of maximizing your long range firepower, right? Uh, because a heavy rocket battery has more dice at both long and closing ranges. However, it does suffer from lower linking dice when you get into closer range. So at close range, your gun batteries can actually pump out more dice than the heavy gun batteries can because of the advantage they get to their supporting numbers. Is it a huge difference? No. Is it something worth thinking about if you're going to invest in the Akron Observation Rotor? I, I think so. I think so. Um, the other thing to consider here is that you can also lose 10 points to take a generator in place of one of your gun batteries. Okay, So that could include atomic, fury, magnetic, or shroud generator. Um, and some of these might very well be worth taking. Um, I'm kind of partial to the shroud generator myself because obscured is very useful, but that is you know, an entirely stylistic choice. And then, of course, you have the option to take escorts and corvettes if you're so inclined. And you also have an internal shield generator in addition to any generators you might take. Uh, so very flexible is, is what I think of when I look at this stat line. You have a lot of options in how you want to configure the ship. And in all honesty, um, the various configurations you can take are all fairly cost-effective, uh, I would say. In other words, you're not going to break the bank by taking some extra rockets or uh, you can easily fit in the Akron Observation Rotor uh, off of this uh, basic stat profile. So let's take a look and see how the name ships mix up uh, the, the game a little bit here. Okay, so the USS Mexico is your electrocannon battleship, okay? So you have the basic stat line, more or less, from the Constitution, and then you take those heavy gun batteries and replace them with electrocannons, okay? As we saw when we looked at the weapons, the electrocannons are more or less equivalent to the heavy gun batteries. Um, there's onesie, twosie dice differences across the different range bands, but by and large, you're going to be putting out similar dice just with extra uh, capabilities from ARC. Um, what's interesting here is you can take the Akron Observation Rotor, but it only costs 15 points versus the 23 points that it cost you for the Constitution. And I can only assume that that's because you have no ability to take any aerial weapons as a part of uh, the loadout for the ship because you're, you're locked in to this loadout. Now, the other cool thing you get is the uh, Tesla Houston Arc Generator, okay? Uh, this is kind of fun. It gives you uh, plus two to speed, and it also gives you an additional attack 
of 13 dice with arc and devastating quality. Remember, devastating means exploding hits count as three hits. Um, the downside is you get a level of disorder <laughs> from doing that. So that is not a income. That's actually a pretty decent uh, option there. Uh, you'll notice, though, that you've lost your internal shield generator, and you've also lost the option to take a generator. And then finally, you have timber mill design, which kind of, is kind of a downside, right, where uh, heavy counters are counters instead when you're doing repair rolls, um, which could be a bad thing because you can expect that as a beefier model with your high citadel value and your uh, appreciable number of hull points, this model is going to stick around on the table for a while, which means that it's going to be taking damage and need to do those repair tests. And you're making that more difficult for yourself with the uh, temperamental design special rule. So, so overall, I mean, this is sort of a, a fun, you know, mad scientist project type of ship. Um, for the 10 point premium over the Constitution, you lose an awful lot of flexibility. So, this one feels like it would be a very situational choice to me. All right, the other named one is the USS Texas. So again, we've got more or less the standard stat line for the Constitution class battleships. This one has the standard loadout, and just like the Mexico, you're launched, you're locked, excuse me, into the loadout that's listed here on the stat card, right? So in this case, you're locked into the standard heavy gun batteries. Uh, you can take the Akron Observation Rotor for the discounted price for, I suspect, a similar reason that it's discounted for the Mexico. You do have your internal shield generator, just like the regular Constitutions do, though. And you get this little guy right here, Focus Gunnery, which means if you shoot everything with the gunnery uh, uh, keyword in it, and for... Remember, the heavy broadside does not have gunnery. So really, this is just talking about your three heavy gun batteries. So if you shoot essentially all three of your main turrets at the same target, um, you get plus two to all the gunnery dice action dice pools for the activation. So that means that you will get um, you know, basically an additional two dice for each of the turrets. That's a nice little boost, I would say. Not much of a downside either. And then finally, you have inspirational friendly units with intent. 10 inches may re-roll a single action dice in their activation, right? Um, so that is potentially the difference between a miss and a exploding hit if you get to re-roll a dice in one of your attacks, right? So that could potentially be um, a big difference maker, although it's probably still fairly situational. So this is the most expensive model in or, or version of the Constitution class. Um, I would say it's probably situational. I, I'm, I'm not entirely sold on Focus Gunnery and Inspirational being a worthy trade for the flexibility you get from the, the stock Constitution class model. But uh, again, this could be a, a fun uh, situational ship that you could build an interesting list around, I suppose. All right, so on to Mass 2, and we're going to go through these more or less in alphabetical order. First up is another specialist ship, the Discovery Arc Cruiser, okay? And so this is your electrocannon cruiser, essentially, okay? So you've got a heavy electrocannon battery, rocket batteries, and broadsides, all paired with what's more or less a standard cruiser stat line. You get your usual bag of tricks for the Union. And you also get the same things we saw on the uh, Mexico, which is the te Tesla Houston arc generator and a temperamental design. Uh, so that is just like with the Mexico, uh, some good stuff and some bad stuff combined there. Now what's interesting is you can take the Akron observation rotor for 15 points, and that would be useful because you have a rocket battery as part of your standard baseline configuration. Um, would it be worth it? You know, that is a tough call. If you were going to take a full unit of three of these, as you can take one and up to two additional models, you know, you're already looking at 363 points there. 
And so you're talking about busting that up to, you know, almost 380 points for a mass two squadron. And that's fairly pricey. Um, but on the other hand, the benefits that you get from having that observation rotor around could outweigh the cost because these don't have huge amounts of defense to them. So getting even a plus one to those could make a big difference for the survivability of this unit. I would have to think about that one. I'd be interested in trying it out for sure though. All right, next up, the Intrepid Light Cruiser. Okay, so this is your budget mass two option here. See that you're coming with a heavy gun battery up front, a regular gun battery out back, and then you've got port and starboard broadsides. So this is a pretty standard gunship. Uh, you can replace this heavy gun battery with a heavy rocket battery for three points. And uh, you can also replace that heavy gun battery with a generator of your choice, okay? And then you can also take the observation rotor for 15 points. Um, so this means that you could configure this as a, a rocket squadron, essentially. You could take uh, the heavy rocket battery, which would bump up your cost to 75 points per model. And then you would tack on the observation rotor for 15 points. So that means for 240 points, you could get three heavy gun batteries, or I'm sorry, three heavy rocket batteries all being boosted out to extreme range by the Akron Observation Rotor. And this is before you account for the Vanguard special rule here, which allows them to do a free move after deployment before the first turn activation. All in all, I kind of like this design. Um, it seems like it can put out a decent punch for not a lot of points. And I think this is definitely a worthwhile option to look into. Um, all right, so let's move on. Lexington Heavy Cruiser, okay? So this is obviously a much beefier ship than the light cruiser we just looked at. Uh, the stat line has a higher uh, citadel value. It's got some additional defense to it. It is almost twice as expensive. <laughs> 120 points versus 72 points. Maybe not twice as expensive, but more than half again is now, here's the thing. You have some of the same flexibility that you had with the light cruiser in the sense that you can replace heavy gun batteries with rocket batteries. You can replace heavy gun batteries with a generator of your choice. And you can take the Akron observation rotor for 20 points this time. So it's a little more expensive to take here than it was for the light cruiser. And understandably so, because you could theoretically ship two count them two heavy rocket batteries on this ship. So this is interesting. This can be a, I think this is a, a tough question on how you'd want to load this one out. Um, you know, the expense of it means that you're probably rarely going to run a fully maxed out special bells and whistles version of the squadron with three ships and a, uh, you know, a bunch of heavy rocket batteries and that type of thing. I mean, you could, right? Um, especially if you're trying to max out your offense on a limited number of hulls, because you can obviously get twice as many rockets on each ship as you can with the light cruiser. But from the games I've played with my Enlightened so far, it seems like more numerous and less expensive tends to be a better bet than fewer numbers for more expense when it comes to your Mass 2 models, and so that makes me weary of, of this stat line a little bit. But you know, like I said, take that with a grain of salt. I haven't played the model on the table, so it might actually be really worthwhile. Uh, Montgomery Support Ship, you know, this is a, a interesting uh, little ship here. So what this does is it gives you the ability to assist other models in their repair rules. Okay, now this is probably something that you would want to use if you were taking something like the Enterprise or maybe trying to squeeze like two constitutions into a single list because, uh, heck, even if you're trying to use the Mexico, for example, uh, or the Discovery cruisers that have the electrocans on them because those 
models have that temperamental design special rule, which means that, that may, they're nor normally less effective with their repair rolls. But if you have one of these ships sitting within 10 inches of those ships, then that can help offset that temperamental design rule by a fair bit. So something to consider. Um, you can take the acronym observation rotor with this, like you can with all the other mass twos. In all honesty, I don't, I don't really see that as being very worthwhile. You have some broadsides on there. That's not a lot. This is not a ship you're buying for offense, however. <laughs> um, you know, 85 points for a, a broadside is not a great deal, right? You're definitely buying this model for the advanced repair facilities and the field repair platform, essentially. Um, but that, that is potentially a very powerful ability if you're built using lots of observation rotors or uh, Patriot automata. Um, because it allows you to potentially keep one of those models in action when it would normally be shot down. So depending on your overall fleet build, one of these could be worth it. Um, but for the most part, you know, this is going to be a choice between having some somewhat situational special abilities or having more offensive units in your fleet. <laughs> and, and my personal philosophy is that if you have to, if you're in a tough spot between choosing those two, you'd probably want to err on the side of more offense. At, at least that's been my observation so far in 3.0. Okay, uh, Reliant Monitor. This is a interesting stat line, okay. Um, you get quite a bit of offense. This is a heavily offense-oriented package. You have that heavy gun battery, you've got broadsides, and now you've got torpedoes. And this is one of the few ships in the Union list that actually gets torpedoes, right? Uh, so that could be something to consider. Um, that heavy gun battery has the option of, you have the option of replacing that with rockets. Uh, you also have the option of replacing it with a generator. And then, of course, you can also take the Akron Observation Rotor for 15 points. I would probably stay away from the Akron for this model unless I was planning on running it as a uh, another rocket boat, right? Um, so you just have to be um, sort of sort of have to think through how you want to configure it. Um, but for the points, I mean, you know, it's considering this is one of the few torpedo platforms in the Union list right now. Uh, this is worth looking at if you're interested in trying to take torpedoes and getting some of the advantages that uh, they, they have, such as automatic extreme range, uh, the submerged quality, that type of thing. Roanoke Strike Carrier. So this is your Mass 2 carrier option for the Federated States. I did it again. <laughs> uh, I, I meant, of course, the Union. And this is something that all the factions more or less seem to be getting is a mass two or cruiser hull carrier model. It has sort of the, a lot of the standard features of ships of that type, such as SRS capacity of four, uh, the ability to squadron up. Um, of course, you have the union special rules such as counter rotation. Um, interestingly, this model does not have give them hell. Uh, so you don't have access to that particular special rule. You can take the Akron Observation Rotor, which is good because you do have a rocket battery. Um, really, though, unless you're going to run a three-strong squadron of these, I would probably save the points on the Observation Rotor um, and, and put the Observation Rotor on a model or a squadron that's got the heavy rocket batteries versus the regular rocket batteries, just me, if that was an option, right? Um, okay, uh, getting close to the end. The Washington Missile Cruiser. So this is another specialist ship, right? Um, you have a limited number of options, but this class of ship gives you access to the cruise missile silo. And as of uh, this version of the Orbat, this is the only ship that can take the cruise missile silo. So not only is this a special weapon for the Union, uh, this is a special weapon for the Washington Missile Cruiser. So the cruise missile silo is interesting. So you notice that the arc is 360. That makes it very um, sort of adaptable. Um, it has all of those advantages that we talked about when we did the weapons overview. Remember, it's blast, so that makes it 
uh, using the circular template, deadly to small ships, high velocity, which makes it hard, the, uh, the, you know, the rockets essentially harder to shoot down. Uh, limited is the downside, but again, that's a one in six chance, essentially, of this thing running out of ammunition on you. So very likely you're going to get at least through half of the game, maybe the entire game, with these things not running out on you. So it is a downside, but I think a relatively minor downside. And it's got some interesting special things. So I would say if you're going to take this unit, one, it's expensive, right? This is more expensive than the heavy cruiser was. Um, but if you're going to take it, I would say the Akron Observation Rover is probably definitely worth it just because of the buffs it gives to the cruise missiles. So the cruise missiles are aerial, and so the Akron uh, Observer Special Rule kicks in for the cruise missiles. And, of course, you have the rocket batteries, and it will work for those as well. Uh, you get the Akron Warning Control System on this unit, right? Um, which means that you also get homing, okay? Um, for targets that are within 15 inches of an Akron uh, observation rotor. It doesn't necessarily have to be the observation rotor attached to this unit. It could be attached to another unit that's further up forward. Uh, so that is potentially very useful. Uh, and then spotter, um, you get sustained <laughs> uh, for weapons with extreme range if the initial target is within three inches of a friendly SRS token. So this unit requires a little bit of effort to sort of fully buff to its maximum potential. But once you do, this thing is going to be just deadly, I think. Expensive, but deadly. Um, I think probably the immediate play style that comes to mind here is you want to try and get this unit together and uh, kind of uh, hide it in the backfield somewhere uh, in order to limit the amount of exposure these models will get to return fire. Uh, they don't have a super strong defensive stat line. Uh, their citadel value is sort of so-so. Therefore, you want to try and kind of keep them away from the front line. But they can just rain fiery death <laughs> from great ranges with these cruise missile silos. Once you have it buffed with their own Akron observation rotor and you have a, uh, another Akron observation rotor further forward, and you have some SRS uh, that are close uh, to the target. So, yeah, a little, a little bit of uh, work to pull it off, but this is a potentially deadly combo unit. A little bit of finesse required to use it, but uh, potentially very powerful. Next, we have the Yorktown Cruiser. So this is kind of the halfway point between the heavy cruiser and the light cruiser, okay? Um, a little bit cheaper than the heavy cruiser. You still have the two heavy gun batteries. You still have the flexibility that the heavy cruiser has with those heavy gun batteries to include swapping out the uh, uh, gun batteries for your rockets or for a generator. So you see that right here and right here. And then you do have the option to take that observation rotor. And again, I would really only do that if you're going to replace one or both of your heavy gun batteries with rockets so that you can maximize the utility of that aerial special rule, right? Uh, but other than that, they have access to the standard F, uh, union uh, special rules there. So, so I think it's, this is a solid choice. And if you really wanted to have lots of rockets in your fleet, I would probably take the Yorktown over the, uh, the heavy cruisers uh, just because uh, it gets you the same amount of rockets for less points per model. And as I said, so far, my experience sort of biases me towards taking more cheaper ships instead of fewer more expensive ships if I have the option. <laughs> all right, so that is pretty much all of the Mass 2 models. So now we go on to Mass 1. All right, so stat line overview for Mass 1. So starting with the Defiant Destroyer, this is sort of a stock standard destroyer. Uh, you get three for 105, and you can get up to six uh, for three to five points per model, right? So if you were to, you can basically get three for 105, or you can double that, up and that'll take it up to 210. Um, not uh, too shabby. This is fairly standard stuff. Um, with these two forward-facing gun batteries, it gives you a fair bit of flexibility. Uh, because you can basically get full power 
on your weapons as you close um, to a target. Uh, so that's not bad at all. You can take the Akron Observation Rotor with them, but to be honest with you, I think it's sort of not worth it for these guys. So they don't have anything that can take advantage of the, uh, the, you know, the aerial trait special buff that the Akron Rotors generate. Um, that being said, if you're looking just at it in terms of your um, defense values, getting that plus one off the Akron Ob Observer Rule might be worth it. The other thing to consider, too, is if you're going to take a lot of the missile cruisers, the Washington missile cruisers we looked at, this unit here with their speed of 10 might not be a bad way to get an Akron observation rotor into close range of a enemy squadron to allow you to maximize your buffs on the Washington rocket cruisers. Just something to consider. Okay. Uh, the Farragut Frigate, um, this is kind of your budget option here. They're noticeably cheaper than the uh, destroyers are. This would be an even better option for the tactic of kind of kamikaze and Akron observation rotor up the midfield, essentially, uh, because you can still take it. And this unit also can get an additional two inches of speed if it doesn't turn. So that would boost its speed all the way up to 12. Um, so not, not a bad ship. Uh, obviously, you have less firepower, right? And that's reflected in the cost. So you have to sort of trade that off between sheer offensive capability and, and maybe a budget way to provide a nice buff for one of your other units. All right, so here's the, uh, the uh, Automata. Uh, this is a Mass 1 unit. This is an interesting way to get some electro cannons into your list if you're trying to find a way for those to get into the list via a Mass 1 model, if that's your thing. Uh, you can take an observation rotor with this unit like you can with everything else. Not entirely sure if it is really worth the downside of the additional point cost, but it is an option. Uh, of course, you've got the fact that it's a robot, so you have the mechanical soul rule. Sharpshooter is interesting uh, because it gives you a, basically it assists you in targeting some of the more robust models that have the higher citadel value. So it gives you a minus two with attacks with gunnery quality, right? And those are the naval electro cannons, not the, the heavy electro cannons. So you do have fewer dice which means that having that sharpshooter on there is a welcome buff to help offset the fact that you're getting fewer dice and shorter range out of your electro cannon. Um, you know, at closing range, each one of these electro cans is going to be three dice, and they have a, a boost of three dice. So if you have four electro cannons, that's going to be a total of 15 dice. With a minus two, against the target citadel, those 15 dice actually have a pretty decent chance of causing some real damage to even a battleship. But definitely any medium out there is going to be fairly well threatened by even a pair of these guys. Um, so, oops, skipped ahead there a little bit. Uh, last of the smalls is our uh, rocket <laughs> destroyer. Uh, this has uh, two regular rocket batteries. And since it's got rockets, um, good candidate for the observation rotor. Even though the speed on these guys is 11, um, this is still something you're going to want to sort of keep in the, towards the back, uh, not necessarily on the front line. Uh, their armor value isn't super great. And uh, the fact that they can, if you're going to take an Akron observation rotor, especially they want to try and keep range as long as possible. Uh, Skyfire rule is kind of cool uh, because it allows you to reroll blanks when uh, shooting aerial units when you are using your rockets. So that's aerial quality. The only things you have with aerial quality on this model are the rocket batteries. Um, so that, in combination with the uh, extreme range from the observation rotor, could potentially be very powerful. And then, of course, you have linear dash as well, just like the um, frigates had. So. It's sort of, sort of interesting. In some ways, this is a conflicted design because your rocket battery weapons tend to 
uh, wants you to keep it at a distance from the enemy, but then you're given all of these special abilities like linear dash and just a higher base speed to begin with that would tend to make you want to charge in if you could. So, sort of an interesting little contrast. All right, so let's talk about fleet options. We really only have two options right now. First is the Union Battle Fleet. This is you know, essentially the plain vanilla standard battle fleet setup that everybody gets. Um, the Constitution Battle Fleet is the only specialist battle fleet we have right now. Um, this gives you uh, essentially a little bit of a buff for building a Constitution Battle Fleet out of the, the box set that's available. Um, so you're locked into a Constitution class battleship. Now this does include both the Texas and the Mexico because they have the Constitution class trait. Then you have to include a Yorktown unit. Okay, so if you're, and just to refresh everybody's memory in case you were uh, getting a little confused by all the names flying around, remember the Yorktown uh, uh, cruiser is the standard cruiser, 100 points, two heavy gun batteries, and the broadside. Um, so it says you must include one of those units, and then you may include up to a further three units with the Union trait, okay? Now what's interesting here is you may not include more than two of any unit except the Yorktown Aquarius class, so sort of an anti-spam rule there, more or less. Um, and this is interesting here. This is what I was talking about earlier. If you have Yorktown units in this battle fleet, you do not gain disorder from give them hell. So this is basically a tool you can use to still take advantage of your faction special rule without the downside. Uh, so if you're really excited about what give them hell does for you, which uh, just as a reminder, right, it means that uh, gunnery or fuselage weapons uh, are devastating. Right. So if you're really wanting to make use of that ability, then you really want to consider using the Constitution Battle Fleet just because it gives you a get-out-of-jail-free card when it comes to the downside from that special ability, at least for the, the Yorktown-class cruisers that are in the list. All right. So uh, next up, I have a couple of fun thoughts on fleet build. So first of all is the stock standard American gun line, right? So this is going to be a fleet that is going to want to bring as many heavy gun batteries as possible, right? And so because we're all about bringing gunnery dice, we want to try and hold back on the use of rockets and generators um, that take away from the number of gun batteries we've got in our fleet. And I would think you would want to use the, the Constitution Battle Fleet for this. And the reason why is what we were just talking about. If we were using a lot of heavy gun batteries, uh, the reason why you want to do that with the Union Fleet is you want to try and use Give Them Hell as much as possible. And if you're going to use Give Them Hell as much as possible, then you are going to want to try and counteract the negative effect any way you can. And one way to do that is to take lots of Yorktowns and use the Constitution Battle Fleet, essentially. Um, this fleet build kind of buys into my philosophy of bringing lots of less expensive units than trying to go the uh, sort of the elite route and bringing a handful of super upgraded and expensive units. Um, the opposite end of that is kind of the electro fleet, I call it. Uh, this is where anything that moves has an electro cannon on it, and if it still moves afterwards, uh, put another electro cannon on it. <laughs> So this is where you would want to bring out the USS Mexico. Um, then you want to bring along some of those Discovery Art Cruisers. And of course, the, uh, the Patriot uh, Automata, uh, because they have uh, the ability to carry electro cannons as well. And as we were talking about, so a couple things. First of all, you would probably want to use the Union Battle Fleet for this one. Um, because uh, you know you don't really you aren't really using any of the advantages that the Constitution Battle Fleet would give you, and the Constitution Battle Fleet would cause you some issues with requiring you to take Yorktowns, which can't take the electro cans if you're trying to stay on theme, right? And this is also the type of list where it would be worthwhile bringing along some of those uh, support cruisers that we were talking about, right? Because you're taking lots of things that have the temperamental design special rule to them or quality to them. And so having the Montgomery support ships around to help 
with the repairs, especially on the, the USS Mexico, right, which is going to be around and have probably lots of damage that needs to repair, that could be a significant advantage, okay? Probably not taking a whole lot of Akrons in this type of list, just because you're very limited in the number of ships that would actually be able to use it. But if you had a spare, you know, 20 to 23 points here or there, it might be worth taking one uh, just for the additional little boost. Uh, the last one that sort of springs to mind is what I'm calling Rocket's Red Glare. And this is uh, sort of a rocket spam fleet, right? And this is where you want to bring out the Akrons. Uh, this is where you want to look at things like cramming rockets onto the battleship, uh, just, you know, the Rocket Connie, I'm calling it. Uh, bring out the Washington Missile Cruisers, uh, the Valiant Fast Destroyers. Uh, this is also where, again, if you're talking about Washington Missile Cruisers, you might want to look at the uh, light carrier in order to get some SRS on the table uh, in order to take full advantage of the Washington Missile Cruiser special socks, right? Um, this, again, is probably more of a fun list. Uh, it's all about uh, trying to max out the, the combos that you have. Um, the downside I see with the red glare list is we're still, like the Electro Fleet, talking about taking expensive specialized units. And uh, you may just run out of models before your opponent does <laughs> in a lot of games. So you have to be careful about uh, that outcome. Okay, so now on to what will probably be the most controversial part of this video. Uh, the faction rating. So, first of all, I should emphasize that this is not entirely scientific, and this is also based off of my own sort of thoughts and evaluations. I am doing some comparisons across the Orbats when I come up with these. Um, so it's not entirely a, a you know, a, a qualitative assessment. There is some quantitative stuff going on uh, behind the scenes. But overall, I would say that when it comes to mobility, uh, the Union ships tend to be a little faster than average, and you have some things like the sprint capability. So they, they rank fairly highly in terms of mobility. I would say, um, you know, 8 out of 10. Oh, and don't forget contra rotation. That also helps a lot with mobility. Mobility isn't just straight speed. It's also how maneuverable uh, and uh, how easy it is to position the fleet. And I think contra rotation definitely gives the Union a, a significant boost there. Um, offense. Uh, so there are lots of really good firepower options for the Union and the Akron Observer and the Give em Hell special rules allow you to really buff the offensive capability of your fleet in quite a lot of interesting ways. So uh, I, I'm giving them also a pretty high rating for offense. Uh, defense, uh, it's so the the armor ratings are pretty good compared to some of the other Orbats out there, but the aerial and submerged defenses aren't so great across the board. And then cost, uh, a little bit high, especially if you are going to be using lots and lots of uh, upgrades, you know, swapping out rocket batteries, buying lots of Akrons, that type of thing. And then finally, variety. Um, variety is where this faction suffers right now, just because we have a a very basic and not quite yet fleshed out Orbat. Um, there are some really solid choices amongst all of the Mass II models, and we have a pretty good selection of Mass IIs to select from, and also the Mass Ones. Um, not every faction has so many choices for the Mass I. Uh, you know, your, your Mass III, Mass IV large models are, you know, you, you only have so many stat lines there, so you know, not, not the most variety, and that's count. But um, overall, you know, sort of middle of the road at a five. Uh, and that's got a lot to do with the fact that the, the Orbat is, is still sort of preliminary until additional uh, fleet boxes come out for the faction. So overall, I, I, I give the faction a seven out of ten. I, I think this is definitely on the upslope of the power curve in terms of what you can do with the fleet. Uh, they look to be a pretty strong faction, and I think that uh, just like the Federated States of America were for earlier versions of dystopian wars, I think the Union is going to be a very kind of beginner-friendly, forgiving fleet just because you have all these different options and you have a fair number of internal shield generators and uh, so on and so forth. 
But at the same time, you've got enough tools in the toolbox that you can do some very interesting things and the hands of a skilled player that can pull off some of the finesse combos that this um, Orbat is capable of doing, it could be a, a very, very deadly force. So I, I think overall, like I said, I'm giving this one a 7 out of 10. And to a degree, these are all preliminary, uh, both because I haven't had a chance to play with or against these rules, but also because, and to a degree, all of the Orbats are also still preliminary as, as more models and stat lines are yet to come. But uh, yeah, I, I think that's going to be it for now. Um, so final thoughts. Um, you know, this, even though they're less complete, you have just a lot of interesting stuff in the toolbox for the Union. So they're definitely a faction worth picking up, even in their current state. Uh, you have a little bit of a problem in that you don't have a special fleet. You know, for things like the Mexico or the uh, Texas, I would really like to see a special fleet that centers around those units uh, because that would go a long way, I think, towards making those units more appealing over the, the bog standard um, Constitution class battleship, right? Uh, so that's something that I hope to see in the future, personally. Um, but... On the other hand, you have all kinds of flexibility on your loadouts for the maps two and three models, and that really, and, and not only that, but there's a number of loadouts that I think would either A, be fun, or B, be, be very powerful, <laughs> as, as I discussed a, a little earlier. So there's that. Um, Akron Spotter, that is a really neat ability, somewhat situational, and you also really need to make sure that your unit loadouts um, include things like rockets in order to really make it worthwhile for the, the points. All right, so thanks for watching. This will wrap up the Orbat overview for the Union. Um, we will be picking this up next time uh, with our next faction here, which, if uh, I am not mistaken, is going to be the Enlightened, uh, which is uh, the next one in order there as we go across left to right. So uh, stay tuned for that next time. And until I see you then, good luck and good hunting.